Hello, Nyeonjong everyone. Today's video is going to be in celebration of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month because today is the first day of May and I'm going to be showing you guys a super easy, simple and also very delicious mung meal. And the main dish today is going to be pork stir fry with ginger. In Mule, we like to call this dish Kambokki Juka. And to accompany this dish, I'm also going to be making a very classic mung pepper dip that we like to make in our house as well as gojocho, which is basically just boiled vegetable. So big shout out to Portland Community College Rock Creek Multicultural Center for reaching out and letting me share a little bit about the Hmong food culture in the United States here and what we like to eat and cook in our daily basis. And thank you for celebrating AAPI Heritage Month as well. So I hope you guys give this recipe a try and let me know what you guys like to add into this dish if you ever made it before. Other than that, let's go ahead and make this super delicious mung meal for all of you guys to see. Let's go! Okay, so before we start cooking, I wanted to show you guys the cut of pork that I'm going to be using and then the herbs and spices that I also like to use. So with the pork, I like a combination of pork belly and a little bit of pork butt or pork shoulder here, uh, thinly sliced. I'm using pork belly with the skin on. Uh, it's basically just for texture. You guys can definitely use it without skin. And I also like a combination of pork shoulder or pork butt thinly sliced as well, just because pork belly tends to have a lot of fat, so I like to balance it out with a little bit more of the meat here. And all you do is slice it pretty thin, and that's about it. Okay, so along with that, we're gonna be adding quite a lot of ginger here. And I sliced it in pretty thin into coin size here, and I also did some match stick slices here as well, so it's up to you guys how you guys want to cut the ginger, but we're using quite a lot because my mom and I love ginger in this dish. So you guys can add as much as you guys want. Roughly, we're using about a full heaping cup of chopped ginger here. And then we also have some kefir and lime leaves that's rough chopped here, some lemongrass, about two that I cut in half and pounded to release the aromas and a lot of minced up garlic and some chili peppers. And of course, you gotta have some cilantro and some green onions. So as much as you guys want, we like quite a lot because we have fresh herbs in our garden right now. So it's super, super delicious right now. Other than that, that's about it for ingredients. Let's go ahead and I'll show you guys how to cook it. Okay, let's go ahead and start cooking. I have a pan here. I'm not going to add any oil to it just because I'm going to cook the pork first and release a lot of that fat. So we're, gonna, we're not going to add any oil. Go ahead and drop the pork in. I'm going to go ahead and season the pork with a little bit of salt. Stir it up. So for this stir fry, you guys can definitely cook the pork to your liking. My mom likes the pork a little bit crispy, a little bit more brown. A lot of people like to cook it just until it's cooked um, and then they'll add in everything else. So it's really up to you guys. Um, I like it a little bit brown, more on the crispier side, but still a little bit not too crispy. So I'm going to cook this until I don't see any more pink and then we're going to add in the garlic and lemongrass. So we'll come back. All right, so it's been about three minutes of cooking this. A lot of the pink has cooked out. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and spread out the meat to the outside and leave the center hollow. In the center, we're gonna go ahead and add in the mashed up lemongrass here and some minced up garlic that we missed up. And we're gonna leave this to cook for about, I don't know, maybe two minutes just to brown up the garlic and the lemongrass. Okay, go ahead and mix everything. So if you guys like the pork just cooked like this, you can stop here, add your herbs, add the ginger, add a little bit of oyster sauce, and you're good. But we're gonna cook it even more because my mom likes it a little bit crispy. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and add in the ginger and the pepper lime leaf and pepper. Let's this up. 
and continue cooking this for about maybe two to five minutes or so. All right, so the pork is cooked to my liking. At this point, I'm gonna add in some oyster sauce. About a tablespoon and a half. And then we're gonna add it in all of our cilantro and green onions. And stir. Alright, go ahead and turn off the heat. We just want to cook the herbs so it's just nice and welted. Other than that, go ahead and taste it for seasoning and this is pretty much it. Very, very simple. Again, you guys can cook the pork to your liking, but other than that, let's go ahead and serve this with some rice and complete our meal. Okay, so to make this a complete meal, I wanted to show you guys how to make what my grandma likes to make for every meal is gojocho which is basically just boiled vegetables in water and she likes to make this so that she can cleanse her palate after she eats it's also a great uh, way to put vegetables in your meal as well um, and she likes to drink the liquid as pretty much her water to kind of help her digest a little bit so we're gonna make some gojocho and it is basically any kind of vegetables that you guys have in your refrigerator boiled in water so i have some water here and today i'm gonna be using some bok choy so i'm using some bok choy that i rinsed up and you guys can definitely use cabbage my grandma likes to use cabbage you guys can also use some pumpkins in here squash uh, zucchinis it's really up to you guys since the pork dish is very fatty and also kind of more on the heavier side, it's great to make some boiled vegetables or some blanched vegetables on the side to complete the meal. Okay, I'm just gonna let this boil for one or two minutes just so it's wilted. And this is pretty much it for gojocho or just boiled vegetables in water. Let's go ahead and I'll show you guys how to make a very simple mung pepper dip that has to be on the dinner table for anyone who needs to spice up their dish a little bit. So this is pretty much done. Turn off the heat and let's get to pepper dip making. Okay, let's go ahead and make the pepper dip. You cannot have a moon meal without pepper dip. So I have a morning pestle here. I'm gonna add in some frozen Thai chili peppers. A pretty big clove of garlic and salt and a little bit of mushroom seasoning and go ahead and pound this until peppers are nice and mashed up all right so this is good let's go ahead and transfer this into a bowl okay let's go ahead and add in some fresh lime juice and some fish sauce. Got about two tablespoons of this or so. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And for color, I'm gonna add in some cilantro and green onions, just a little bit. Stir this up. And this is it for the pepper dip. Uh, we like to have this on the side just for anyone who wants to spice up their dish, uh, stir fry, or just add a bit kick to their meal. Other than that, this is the pepper dip. In the Mong culture, there's a lot of different types of pepper dip. This is the most basic one that we like to make in our house. So uh, this is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and plate everything up and enjoy the meal.
Okay, so this is it for our very classic but also tasty mung meal here. We have our pork and ginger stir fry along with some white jasmine rice here with our boiled vegetables or what we like to call it gojocho as well as our pepper dip here. So I hope you guys give this a try and I hope you enjoy this video. Big shout out to Portland Community College Rock Creek Multicultural Center for reaching out and for celebrating AAPI Heritage Month. Um, it's been fun cooking this classic moon dish for you guys to see and I hope you guys can enjoy this and give it a try whenever you get the chance. Again, happy happy AAPI Heritage Month and until then, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy this meal.